And welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from a sunny, slightly chilly San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined from Denver by Steve McDonald. How are you doing, Steve? I'm doing great. And we're sunny, but probably not as warm. A lot more chillier yeah. here. <laughs> yeah, well, hopefully uh, you get the, the snows to come soon and you get all the skiers and everybody uh, flooding into uh, into the area. And uh, and so Steve is a C-level executive marketer with over 18 years of B2B experience, uh, experience as a full-time and fractional CMO and currently the CEO of ContentStrategies.io, a thought leadership content company and the CEO of a MarTech SaaS. Uh, and what we're going to talk today is about directly linking the creation of thought leadership content to lead generation sales activities. And and Steve, you know, we've heard about we've heard about con you know content and content is king and inbound and you know content is everything. But it feels to a lot of people like we've been producing content and mountains of content and our AI is coming increase that amount of content. And it's like, okay, we're producing all this content. Well, what's the actual return on it and who's actually reading it and why are we even doing it in the first place because we often see people like they just can't make that connection between we're producing a lot of great content but it doesn't seem to be doing anything for us so here's the way that i think about it and especially in the mm -hmm. world of of b2b is that there's this big trend that's happening and the trend is that the b2b buyer is doing much, much more of their own research to make their own decisions before they ever even want to talk to anybody in the company. So what's happening here is we've got to figure out a way that we're going to get earlier in the buyer's journey with them and get conversations started earlier. And that's not talking about our own tech or features and benefits, products, services, that kind of level of content, which is really important at a certain point. But if we're not a household name and we need to get in, we're a challenger brand, we're a brand that has to work our way into that, that group of consideration, then we've got to get visible and we've got to become a part of their research so that mm -hmm. we're under consideration. And the only way that you do that is through thought leadership content. And this is the content that sparks interest. And in fact, I, I ripped this off out of a, an article in Forbes, but it's kind of become my mantra now. And that is that content marketing solves problems, but thought leadership sparks conversations. Mm. So the idea here is we just have these prospects, these companies that we want to be doing business with. If we're not in a conversation with them in an ABM sales process, guess what? We're not going to win the business. So we have to be really good about how do we create that conversation? And because they're doing more and more of their research, marketing becomes a more and more active part of the sales process in terms of opening up the door to that first conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I think it's, uh, it, it's, it's one of those things where, uh, as you said, it's it's about the it's about the issues or or the problems or the opportunities or helping somebody you know see things in a different way. Uh, those are the piece of content that people will will react to. And as you said, to start a conversation, because if you're just churning out nonsense or you know or product stuff or just you're just sending out stuff for the sake of it. It's not, you're not going to get that. You're not going to get that interaction. It's not going to peak a conversation and you're not going to look that clever anyway, are you? No, no. In fact, there's, you know, we all know that we have to have a, a, a brand that represents expertise, right? People want to talk to somebody that, yeah. that actually can add to the conversation. They can teach them something, right? They're looking for that, that what's called that trusted advisor status, right? They, they want to be educated. Mm -hmm. and they don't want to be sold to. Yep. Right? They, they want to be educated. So here's the thing, though, is thought leadership should be a goal of absolutely every single B2B company and on a regular basis. But it, it's the hardest content to create mm -hmm. because it's, you know, we're subject matter experts of our own babies, our own yep. tech, our own products, our own service. We talk all night long about that, right? 
but we're not necessarily experts on all the trends that are going on in the industry, the innovations, what are the key problems, how are others being innovative and how they're solving that. We're not thought leaders that encompass all of that. Mm -hmm. So what happens is, and I'm a victim of this myself because I'm a SaaS founder, is we, we, get, we get in love with our tech, right? And we, and we think, well, as soon as people find out what we do, right? The floodgates open. Yeah. Well, it's just not how it works, right? So you've got to create as a competency, you've got to create this thought leadership that creates that thought, that expertise and that trusted advisor status. Mm -hmm. And there's a, a great, great stat out of a number of different surveys that are out there, but that the actual, a sense of connection to your brand as an expert, right? As somebody that can help, is as important as what your company does. So that's a, a different way of kind of reframing this and thinking about this. But most companies just don't do it because it's too hard to create consistently week after week, really high quality thought leadership content that these B2B buyers, they're saying, hey, I'm, I'm taking on the role of doing more research. Right, right. But I always I have the same amount of time. Yeah. So to get their attention, the bar is getting higher and higher and higher in terms of what is it that's worthy of their time. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's that's the problem to solve, right? Is we know we got to do this thought leadership, but how do we do it efficiently? How do we do it at scale? Yeah. That's the that's the problem that we as as sellers haven't really cracked mm -hmm. yet. Yeah, but and and I think also, Steve, it's uh, you know how can we create content that's easily engaged with as well? Because as you said, I mean, if if it's not delivering some insight like pretty quickly, if it's rambling, if it's like fluff or whatever, you're not. Re it's not going to really work. I, I think. I think as the noise gets louder and as it gets harder, I think it's going. You're going to differentiate yourself by you know, well-written, concise material that delivers their points in a very, very easy to access way. And I think that's where you can, that's where you can separate yourself a little bit from the people who are just churning out stuff. Absolutely. And, you know, so here's something that everybody that's listening can do mm -hmm. because the creation of thought leadership is not hard. We think it is, right? Because we think we have to come up with it ourselves. Mm -hmm. However, you know, think about webinars, right? And we, and we invite guests onto webinars and they're experts and they have their point of view. And then we take that content and we do a million things with it, right? That's thought leadership content, but that's hard to do. Get these panels of experts together. It takes a lot of time and a lot of effort. But what you're doing right now, right, is you're writing a podcast and you're mm -hmm. having experts come onto the podcast. Yes. So any B2B company that's listening out there right now can say, you know what? We can start a podcast. We can bring on industry experts, but I, I would recommend that everybody goes two or three levels deeper than that. And because one of our one of our point of view is that you should expect a lot more out of thought leadership creation. Why shouldn't the very act of creating thought leadership also be a lead generation activity? Mm -hmm. Why shouldn't it also be a sales activity? Why shouldn't it be a customer expansion activity? And the way that that all happens is you start a podcast and you bring on your ICP. Yep. But within that world of your ICP, you bring on your prospects that are in pipeline. Yep. Right? The ones that you want to get more insights in how they're thinking, right? And you want to put them, you want to create a relationship that's that's much different than a sales conversation. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's a wonder because salespeople love having their prospects on a podcast, not only the learning, not only the, the dynamic, the relationship dynamic that changes, right? But yep. it creates this healthy competition. Mm -hmm. And then you also, if you're revenue minded, you say, okay, those are our that's rev gen targets, our prospects. Also our customers, you should be getting a healthy increase in revenue from your existing customer yep. base every year. So the ones that are the biggest land and expand opportunities, invite them onto the podcast. Mm -hmm. And then third is you should be thinking about the creation of thought leadership as a lead generation tactic. I was on the phone just the other day with a five-time B2B CMO. And she said, Steve, I like this. She goes, we have a hundred companies 
that we want to have a conversation with. Right. We haven't been able to crack the door yet. We haven't gotten into that organization. She said, we can invite them onto the podcast too, can't we? Yeah. Yeah. Lead generation, revenue from existing customers, you know, prospects and, and filling that pipeline and accelerating those. All of a sudden, this becomes a very sales focused activity, not just mm -hmm. content creation, which has all those benefits anyways. Yeah, and I think that's a and I think that's a really important uh, thing is to look at it strategically and look at it. Don't look at it as another discrete task because I think uh, in in some organizations they'll say, yeah, 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 we need to pump out content. So marketing, you pump out content, and uh, the content's thrown over the wall or whatever. There's very little like connection between you know sales and marketing, which is another whole other story. But I think that's that's the problem is that they need to come together to define, as you said, like, you know, here's our here's our ICP, here's our targets, here's here's interesting people at that organization that if you could get onto the podcast, it would really help me leverage that, you know, as part of the relationship. That requires just a little, not too much, but just a little bit of strategy and process behind yes. it. Yes. Well, in 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 terms of that strategy, right? A lot of podcasters, we get guests on, and it's like, let's see what we can get, right? And mm -hmm. at the end, you kind of look back and you go, okay, was that a good one? Was it a bad one? But the goal, the number one goal should be, how am I increasing sales? Mm -hmm. like, how am I accelerating and enabling sales to happen? So no matter what, you should be having the right guests on, right? That's strategic, like you just said, yeah. but also... You should have, as an organization, if you've got a unique point of view, which you, we all have to, right? You sure. can't be seeing yeah. the same things as everybody else. So mm -hmm. you have a unique point of view. And then behind that unique point of view, you have your belief statements. They have a, a little healthy dose of controversy behind it that you want validated. Because when you say it, it means this much. Mm -hmm. But when you get others and the peers of your ICP validating it, now all of a sudden it means this much. Yeah. Yeah. So... If you go in and you say, look, these are the kinds of things that we recommend, our point of view, our beliefs, and now through our podcast, bringing on our ICP, we're going to validate the most important things that we want to use as part of our sales proposition. And then the third level of, is it being a strategic use of your time and the resources, is that every company has turnover. So yep. an internal learning program has to be a part of what we do. Mm -hmm. There's new salespeople coming on. There's new marketing. There's new customer success people. So if you're interviewing your ICP on a weekly basis, guess what? You're learning from them at the same time. Right, 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 right. And, and I think that's so, that's so important because sometimes whenever you talk about changing buyer behavior or changing customer behavior or all of that or um, evolving behavior, uh, one of the first things people often say is like, how, you know, how do I keep up with this? Like, how do I know what changes in buyer behavior? And, you, and normally you say, well, you, know, you just talk to your customers. It's quite simple. But what you're talking about here as well is you could broaden that and you could learn so much about your ICP, maybe things you weren't even like aware of or there's or there's. They're 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 evolving the way they interact with the market or whatever. But there's a lot there's a lot you can learn that removes. And I, I remember being on your podcast. Uh, you asked me at the end what was the one thing, and I said assumptions. And we're still, you know, it's a great way of dispelling assumptions is actually having conversations with the actual people and listening and listening and understanding to them because uh, and understanding them because often they will challenge some of they will challenge some of your assumptions. Right. Right. It completely will challenge your assumptions. And you'll, the minute that you stop talking to your customers, you stop talking to your ICP is the minute that you, you get disconnected mm -hmm. and you think, cause you have familiarity because you're creating programs for them all the time. You're thinking about them all the time, but our job, right. Is to represent the customer at the table, right? the, mm -hmm. the highest voice of authority in any organization is the customer. Yeah. Right? So if we're not talking to them on a regular basis, and all this does is it just, it kind of puts it into a program. Like we're going to be talking to them every yeah. single week. And mm -hmm. we're not going to be just asking the easy questions, right? Like, I think, you know, when you and I first started talking and on my podcast, I'll ask CMOs, you know, we'll do a whole series on why do B2B CMOs fail so quickly. Yep. Right? 
Sounds kind of controversial, right? But you learn a lot by dissecting that and then understanding how do we solve that, right? Why do we have the shortest tenure in the, in the C-suite? So it's about, it's, everything has to be very strategic about what you're doing. But if you do it right, and then, you know, that thought leadership content, this, what you're doing here, this is long form content. This mm -hmm. is video. This is yeah. audio. This is blog posts. This is mm -hmm. emails. This is YouTube shorts. This is summary videos. This is, this is all kinds of stuff, right? So it just explodes because content, to your point at the very, very beginning, it's the fuel that creates all demand generation, yeah. you know, all the mm -hmm. campaigns that we do, all the sales enablement that we do. So that's how important content is. Yeah, and and some people might ask, say, it, it sounds great getting my ICP onto the podcast, but how do you, how do I make sure that I can do it elegantly without uh, it looking like it's, yeah, it's looking like, uh, oh, hey, Steve, I just want you to come on because, well, I want to prospect you. I mean, you know, I mean, well, without, you, without being that obvious, you know, how do you do it in an elegant way and a way that creates value for both of you? So it's not like you're conning somebody into coming on your podcast. There's something in it for them as well. So no matter what, you could start your podcast on day one and you have something extremely valuable. I mean, I think you're like, it was like some crazy amount of like 2000 podcasts or something yeah, you've so, done, right? Yeah, I'm getting but there. for the people that are, are listening here, day one on your podcast as long as you have a list inside of Salesforce or HubSpot or whatever you're using, right? You can promise to put your guests onto a platform, right? So like I do CMOs and I have a list of over 10,000 CMOs, CROs, and CEOs that get a distribution of every single podcast episode that I create. So you can promise on day one mm -hmm. to have an incredible opportunity to put them up on a stage in front of their peers Mm -hmm. to share all of their insights. That's not something they can do for themselves. Right. So right away you're adding value and you're, you're building a podcast. So your goal is to get high quality content. And then just at the end of that, you know, you have time for a conversation at the end. And so I asked my CMOs, tell me a little bit about, you know, what you're doing in thought leadership. Mm -hmm. if, it, if it, you know, if it's kind of goes somewhere, then it goes somewhere. If it doesn't, we've had a fantastic podcast. They get tremendous benefit out of it. They thank you for being on the podcast. It's absolutely genuine. Mm -hmm. right? But they genuinely like to hear if you believe in your company, in your solutions or your products, and you've got their ear and you've got a different point of view than they've heard before, they genuinely want to hear that too. Yeah, no, I I, 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 totally agree, and I, and I think it's, uh, and I think the other thing too is, uh, as we may have discussed before, but I think there's more pressure than ever within organizations to get their executives out there and going on podcasts and stuff like that. I think that's something that a lot of marketing departments are pushing really yeah. hard. So because of that, it should make it easier for you to find the people to come on your podcast because they may have already, this may be something that's bubbling in the background already. And a lot of them don't know where to start, or even a lot of the marketing departments don't even know where to start. Right. The, the creating thought leadership from your executives is a strategic initiative or should be mm -hmm. for every single one of these companies. So there people love to be on podcasts. Podcasts are wildly popular. They're actually tied in the B2B world for the number one research tool mm -hmm. that our buyers go and use. So there's just, there's so many reasons why people want to be on podcasts, appreciate being on podcasts, and it creates a, a whole different dynamic in relationship versus if you called somebody or emailed them and said, I'm from Sales Pipeliner and I'd love to talk to you about your CRM solutions. Like, I don't have the time of day for that, right? Yep, yep, yep. So it opens the door in a very, very authentic way. And it establishes a relationship. And if the person on the other end wants to continue the conversation, 20, 30, 40% of the time that happens, then you're talking to prospects, you know, multiple prospects all the time on a new, yeah. new ongoing basis. Yeah, and I think that's the and, and I think that's the the important point is make it authentic, make it genuine, make it sure it's a it's a win win for both of you that there's value for both people, and as you said, I mean that's a great basis for an ongoing relationship. If it turns into, if some of it turns into business, that's fantastic. If some of it it doesn't, you still 
developed a relationship and who knows you may even like word of mouth you know that's never a bad thing either yeah uh, maybe no, it establishes your credibility yeah i mean we we all get a rub off of credibility by the quality of the guests that we invite in yeah absolutely right? and so when cmos see oh i've those are the, so you, you interviewed those kind of cmos and these ceos and those cro's and right away they know it's legitimate they know that it's something that's high quality that they want to be a part of. So just like anything, like we talked about how quality content, if you're going yeah. to do a podcast, you got to got to make sure that it's very high quality. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I did a really good point you made there about the about the guests, because you want people to sort of aspire to be in that group or or to somebody. If you say, do you want to be on the podcast X, Y and Z have already been on it and they go, oh, oh really? That's interesting. Right. I wouldn't, you know, in their head, they're going, well, I wouldn't mind me being up there with those names too so um yeah i think i think uh, it's all about you know people the company you keep so uh part of it is uh is making sure that you have a good roster of guests that you can that when you reach out that you have something to recommend yourself by absolutely absolutely yeah. it's there's there's no reason to not try to do a podcast what's the worst case scenario you're three yeah. months in and you decide to stop None of your <laughs> buyers are going to say oh my gosh Steve just stopped his podcast. What happened? <laughs> right. You know, there's, there's very little downside yeah. to doing this. There's tremendous upside to doing this. Yeah, no, absolutely. Well, listen, Steve, as usual, this is fantastic, uh, fantastic content from Steve. Uh, all of Steve's information will be below this video, but before we go, Steve, do tell people a little bit more about content strategies. Well, we run podcasts. I call it thought podcast enabled thought leadership. So everything that we talked about here, we soup to nuts do that for our clients from handling all the guest management, doing the hosting, creating the content, working with them strategically on what we need, working with their sales departments, with their prospects, customer success, with their land expand customers. So it's a very, very, I'm a CM, former CMO, right? Mm -hmm. We work with CMOs. So we basically do what we've been talking about here on behalf of our clients. Yeah, fantastic. Well, listen, I would encourage you to reach out to Steve. Uh, this is something that when you when it when you do it well, it works really well. Um, but sometimes it's difficult to get started and it's difficult to do well if you don't know what you're doing. So, which is totally understandable because it's a new frontier to a lot of people. So I encourage you to go check out uh, Steve and, and content strategies. It's always good to get a helping hand when you start out. So thanks again, Steve. Thank you for watching, listening. I'll see you all again soon.